Um, hi, Cecil. Welcome again. Thank you so much for uh, being my guest uh, today. Um, we talked before, and you know that I have been doing some work, uh, research in diversity for years. Uh, it's not just a topic for me, it's my life. Uh, but as you know, I specifically focus on gender diversity, cultural diversity, ethnic diversity. To be honest, I haven't done any research, any work uh, in order to understand the challenges or struggles of LGBTIQ society. So um, I'm so happy that, you know, I'm talking to you today. Um, to be honest, the purpose of our call today is, is to discuss the, uh, the, the effects of COVID-19 on diversity and inclusion. And you are a freelance uh, translator, but you are the co-founder of Queer Base, which was established to welcome and support LGBTIQ refugees. Uh, in yeah. Austria. So it goes beyond LGBTIQ society, LGBTIQ refugees. So before jumping into, you know, discussing the effects of COVID-19 on diversity, could you please tell us more about this, this organization? What was your starting point? What do you do? What does this organization do? Well, um, welcome, Hoya, and thank you for inviting me and giving uh, the possibility to present queer base to maybe a larger audience. So, as you said, uh, the association was founded 2016, so it's very new. Um, we have been alerting the, the authority of the city of Vienna since a long time about the very difficult situation of LGBTIQ refugees uh, in the um, general accommodation. Mm -hmm. because they face their uh, the same homophobia, the same transphobia they have been running away from, from their home countries. Mm -hmm. So eventually, 2016, we could start a cooperation with two big players, uh, Diakoni and, um, and the Fonds Soci uh, Socialis Wien, as we say here, this is a social organization of the city of Vienna, and they decided to support us. So we started our work uh, to welcome and support LGBTIQ refugee. It means that we prevent violence and discrimination against, against the LGBTIQ refugee. Um, we try to ensure a fair asylum procedure meaning that the people have the information they need to have, that they know how procedure is going on, that they have access to legal support to tell their stories. And we provide them safe housing and a social network. Mm -hmm. Safe housing means that the city of Vienna or some other organization are providing um, small accommodation unit everywhere in the city where people can live without fear, without uh, being afraid of the neighbor, without being afraid of being beaten or discriminated in the place where they live. And to prevent social, social isolation, we have set up um, different measures and a social program, activities like sports, swim classes, football, um, cultural activities, trying to go together to museums, to offer German classes, all these kind of things, uh, to give the LGBTIQ refugee the possibility to participate to the social life in Austria. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is basically the work of Queer Base. Mm -hmm. Which is fantastic, and uh, <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Cecil, do you think so? You said that this uh, organization was founded in uh, 2016. So, what kind of progress do you think, or do you believe, you have done so far in terms of creating, you know, certain <laughs> awareness in Austria towards um, including LGBTIQ? 
Yes, I, I think Queerbase was founded uh, at the right moment. Uh, people in different uh, organization in the refugee field, let's say, have been waiting for something like Queerbase to rise up. Um, we have been doing a lot of lobbying and networking so that even if we are the only organization in Austria offering this kind of support for LGBTIQ refugees, we are in contact with a lot of different organizations in all Austria, in Salzburg, in Innsbruck, in Vorarlberg, in Carinthia, in Styria. So that <clears throat> uh, we were able to create a pool of knowledges and we are able to share it. So even if the people don't always have the possibility to come to Vienna um, for a consultation, for example, we are able to share our knowledge so that their supporters are able to support them where they live. Mm -hmm. This is one of the greatest achievements of Queerbase. Mm -hmm. So do you have people in, in, in these cities as well? Or how do you... No, no it's, 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 um, a very, it's a network of volunteers mainly based on LGBTIQ existing community. Mm -hmm. So it's like, for example, you have the um, Rosalie La Panther in Graz. So when one of the refugee comes to them and say, I I'm lost, I need support, they call us and we try remotely to support each other. Mm -hmm. So it's all based on, on a lot of uh, volunteers. In, in Vienna, we have the chains to be funded by the city. So um, we are like uh, five people working on a partly time basis so, uh, to do the job. But behind us, it's more than 30 volunteers. Mm -hmm. The translators, the legal advisor, um, all the supporters, all the people who are offering the German classes or we are doing the sport activities. Everything is volunteer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, what we also have been able to achieve is to raise awareness uh, on the level of the authorities, but also on a legal level. We did a workshop to train judges and other uh, legal assessor uh, in cooperation with the UNRCR last year. So it was a very important step to inform judges and to sensibilize them on sexual orientation, on sexual minorities, on gender identity. Mm -hmm. And um, with all these, these things, we were able to establish Queerbase as a small player, but a very important player. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The reason why um, I wanted to organize, to, to have these calls with people like you, is to um, create uh, exchange between organizations. That's why I try to invite people from the universities, NGOs, private organizations. And my aim is to make all organizations to, to exchange, to understand their, each other's, you know, challenges. Um, if um, we come back to, um, to the topic of today, the, the, the effect of uh, COVID-19 on diversity and inclusion, um, so what would you like to say? Because uh, let me put it in that way. Um, I had a fear of, you know, uh, rising xenophobia uh, and racism. Um, in, in specifically in this time, because um, most of the time people uh, have the assumption that the virus comes from the outside. It is it is not me, you know, uh, who can be uh, who can be doing things wrong. It's the other person, and this mentality is totally against diversity, inclusion, and equality. So, what do you think? Do you agree with me that you know? So the, the progress that you have done so far um, should stop here, can be on hold for a while. What do you think? Let's start with this question and I would like to ask you. No, no, we, we, we didn't stop. As, as you say, um, 
um, COVID has impacted a lot uh, refugee and more than LGBTIQ refugees. First, because as you mentioned, xenophobia is, is rising up, especially in Austria. Uh, we had a, a very uh, right-wing government um, till last year and the, um, the atmosphere in the society had changed a lot in this year and we still are uh, feeling the impact of this and the consequences of this right-wing government that we had. So when it comes to, to COVID, we noticed a different treatment of persons in Austria depending on their um, situation in the society. Uh, LGBTIQ refugees are done on the scale, let's say, and they were, for example, not well informed. Uh, a lack of information in their languages so that they could understand what was allowed and what was not allowed. So a lot of people received information that they must not leave the house, only for going to, to the doctor or only for shopping. So a lot of people from queer bees stayed at home the first three, four weeks without going out. They were afraid because they didn't know is it allowed or not. So uh, the second thing is that their social contacts are very limited because they are not allowed to work. So the only contact with outside is our activities or German classes. And when the German classes stopped, people could not participate anymore because they don't have a computer mm. or they don't have internet at home. So um, that's why we focused in this month of lockdown in, in spring 2020 on giving the correct information. We did a lot of translation work so that people could access information in their own languages or at least a language they understand. And we focus on maintaining social contact by uh, WhatsApp or by meeting one-to-one -one and going for a walk. So this has been on a personal level exhausting because this is not how we are meant to work but this was the only way we had to maintain the contact and to not exclude uh, this group completely for uh, from the social life mm -hmm. so I, I think this is for small NGOs as queries this is very very important uh, to continue to keep on working to be creative to use on it other channels that the one and also to keep an eye always on the official information because the official information is never meant for minorities mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you know the unemployment um, is getting higher not only in Australia everywhere due to the you know COVID-19 and we see that and in, 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 in many countries, most of the time, it's the minorities, uh, you know, who lose their job. Um, what is the situation in Austria? Let me ask you one thing. I mean, in July, OECD launched a report, uh, which is titled as the Road to LGBTI Inclusion. And they shared, I had a look at this report, they shared some facts and figures, and they said that the many countries have done some progress in terms of this you know, inclusion, but being LGBTI you know, at work, discrimination still continues despite the progress towards equality. So what is the situation in Austria or, you know, in terms it's, of it's very different. It depends where you work and who you are. Um, if you work, for example, in, in a big company, having a diversity management, having maybe LGBTIQ group, um, people will be more empowered to come out, to talk openly about their family life, about um, what they have been doing during the weekend. Uh, maybe they will even think about invite their partner to the Christmas party. If you work in an environment where 
you don't know exactly where, for example, example the um, let's put it that way, the um, conservative gender performance is very important. Uh, if you have the impression that your colleagues are not very open-minded, you will not tell. Yeah. And if you have the impression that uh, your, um, your boss is, is a likely conservative, you will not tell because you never know how it will impact your career. Yeah. And nobody will, will say, well, it's because you're LGBTIQ. People are not stupid. Uh, we don't have a full discrimination, uh, protection from discrimination, sorry, but there is a very clear law in Vienna protecting LGBTIQ person against discrimination at the workplace. So mm -hmm. bosses, companies, they know what to do, they know what to say and what not to say. But that's something that we feel um, as, as a member of a sexual minority, you develop a kind of a very fine radars and you know exactly when you are in danger and we are not. And you know exactly when you should tell and when when not. Mm. So, because for most of us, this radar is necessary to survive. And if, if we are allowed in a country like Austria, where we have a lot of freedom and we are very protected and we receive a lot of um, support from different persons from the uh, outside of the communities, we still have to be careful because you never know. Mm. So if it comes to your work, meaning your existence, uh, your financial existence, you are very careful. And if you cannot come out at work, it makes your life a little different. It's, it makes you living to life. Mm. The official one and the one you have at home. And you have to be careful to what you say. Mm -hmm. Where have you been? You cannot tell I've been to this restaurant. You cannot tell I've been with my partner there. So it's... Mm. It's a lot of um, things that you have to take care of. And it comes that sometimes people say, well, well, these people, this colleague is, is very competent, but not very talky, not very talkative. Mm. So, yeah, but it depends a lot on which company you work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And for us, it makes a big difference. If you're out, you, uh, you relax at work. So it means you're um you work better you are more creative because you don't need to use energy to hide yourself mm -hmm. so you're focused on your work this is the big difference and sometimes people are asking how do you know it's safe for you and sometimes it's a small question it's like when people are asking do you have a partner so ask if i have a male partner or a female partner um if you see like for example a very small rainbow somewhere at the office of the human resources it makes a difference doesn't mean that the people is part of the community but it means that we are welcome here mm -hmm. or they so value all, yeah yeah that's all these this small signs mm -hmm. you don't think about sometimes but this is making the difference mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so Ceci, what what do we need to do? I mean, what actions you believe can private organizations or universities or NGOs or even being a single, you know, citizen, individual, what actions do we need to take to keep this inclusiveness thing as a must, specifically in times of crisis? I think the most important is exactly what you're doing at the moment bringing the people together talk to each other because i cannot assume that my neighbor know how is my life if we don't talk to each other we will never know how how we are struggling or if we are happy or not so if we stay in contact with each other if we are able to make maybe the last step or the first step to come out to say hello my name is Cecile I'm here um, if for example on a political level people don't forget 
even if they have the impression they repeat themselves, to talk about minorities, to talk about discrimination, and to, to stay aware of what is happening when you walk in the street, you see how, how things are going on. Like sometimes it's enough if you have the impression that a person is getting into trouble just to ask her if she's okay. It, that's, that's the most important, I think. We should never stop to talk to each other. Mm -hmm. Exchange and interaction yeah. is, is, is significant uh, and necessary. And yeah. uh, Cecil, if you were me, did you know, I, th 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 this is my standard type of question. If you were me, Oya, having Cecil, the co-founder of Queerbase, in front of you, what question would you like to? Ask Cecil. Ask me what I wish for, for the future. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a great question. And what do you wish for the future? Well, I, say, I, I, I wish really that uh, we concentrate on, on the positive things and not on the negative. I wish that when we think about lesbian gay, bisexual, transgender, or intersex person, that we think of us as loving persons, loving parents, loved children. So um, I think this is, this is the most important. We should not be um, focused on our differences, but we should focus on what unites us. Mm. That's great. I, I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, that's fantastic. And thanks, you, thank, thanks a lot for sharing your, your thoughts and ideas with me. Is there anything that you would like to say or share before I, I close this session? Well, um, I said um, queer is small. So uh, if people once would like to support us, feel free, you will find us under uh, Queerbase on Insta and Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, if you are in Vienna, feel free to join. We are doing some activities in the next month. Uh, we are sometimes participating to different cultural events. So feel free to come, to join, to write us, to support us. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. And I, I will be there definitely. Uh, <laughs> thanks for your time. Uh, and stay safe and healthy. You too. <laughs> <laughs> bye. Ciao. Bye. Bye bye.